This is an in conversation with the wonderful Grace Hamilton, aka Spy. When we hear a Spice tune, we feel like the baddest thing, no matter where we are. Cool it down, me I go cool it down, me I go cool it down. She's created a personality that's just far bigger than her tracks. Because a lot of people don't know colorism is different from racism. Mm -hmm. Just so you are aware, you know, say Spice have other tunes. It's just that people like the ones that are explicit. I do adult entertainment. Mm -hmm. There's no going around about that. She's got more stamina than Beyonce. I've never seen Beyonce jump off a speaker no. or even a scaffolding onto, onto the stage. Crush. Yeah, in the splits. You want this song to come? You gotta sing for it. They see the glory, but they don't know the story. Right now, 2019, she's a queen of dancehall. <laughs> Grace Hamilton. I want to talk about like before there was a Spice, like you, young, in Jamaica, oh, growing right. up. Grace what, Hamilton. What type of person were you? Before there was Spice, Grace Hamilton. Um, very shy. I used to go to church. I was a very nice girl. I used to sing on the choir. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, growing up in Jamaica, um, I think it's a tradition for every Sunday, you have to go to Sunday school. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, my parents used to make sure I used to go to Sunday school. That's my memory. And of course, when you go to Sunday school, when you look cool, they're going to pick you out, and you have to go to the choir service, or you have to depend on the choir, or it's just mandatory. Like, so that's what Grace Hamilton used to do. Mm -hmm. She used to sing on the choir. And I think that's where I first discovered my voice. Um, and I discovered it because they used to put me at the front, because my mouth did loud. My little bit more my phone loud. It's that was is. always that one that with the big voice. Yeah. So I think that's really where I discovered my voice, when they used to put me to the front or they used to give me that solo part, um, you know, in church. Mm -hmm. And how old were you around those years when I you were in church? I was very like, young. I was maybe like even... To be honest, I, I remember my first performance at four. Mm -hmm. And I remember that performance because I was going to basic school in Jamaica. That's like your first school. And they used to have something called JCDC festivals where all the school, all the basic school would enter, all the primary school would enter, all the high school. And I went there to sing. Mm -hmm. And I went there to do like poems and stuff. And me used to say, up the road I look to see if any traffic's near to me. <laughs> Down the road I look as well. And I listen for a horn or a bell. Oh, there's something coming. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yes. <I> <laughs> I did that at four years old. And so I was doing it since I was a child. Mm -hmm. So everything that I do now as an adult, all my years of performing at high school, through the choir, everything has molded me and shaped me into the performer that I am today. So I've been doing it since I was very young. No, that's amazing to be um, singing from right. four, rapping from so four. I've been doing that since I was four. Then I left from Bakesy School, primary school, still on the choir, still leading the choir. So all my little props that I'm doing now on stage and setting up my entrances, I used to do that in high school. I used to be the leader for the choir, so I would be the one to say, OK, we're going to come out like this, and we're going to wear this, and we're going to do that. So that's really what I used to do as Grace Hamilton. You then obviously left Jamaica, and you went to London for the first time. How did you end up in London? What did you think of London? Was it like a culture shock? Because I know it's a climate shock, um, but was it culturally different for you? Actually, yes. I used to live in London, and... <laughs> I used to um, live here for a short time. My Auntie Devon is here with me. Big up Auntie Devon as well. Um, I used to live with her. Um, I came here when I was about 10. My father died when I was nine, when I was nine years old. Um, I had four other siblings. It was very hard for my mom, very difficult. Um, I remember my grandfather, may his soul rest in peace. Um, he was the one who said he's going to give me a, big, a better opportunity because I was very brilliant. I was very brilliant. I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, he liked me, saw potential in me and stuff and wanted to give me like a, a better opportunity. Coming here now, this is the shock. So 10 years old, um, in Jamaica, we used to walk barefoot, no shoes. So as a little girl, you'd probably run up and down. Because, you know, I come from humble beginnings, never really have it. Poor little girl, my mom don't have it. My father died. So used to just go outside and play barefoot. Um, a lot of kids in the community, because that's what I'm used to. Um, 
if you see a dog on the street, you probably throw a bone to him, like regular food, like you don't pet them up and, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like, that's what me know. So when I come to England, I think my aunt had a little dog called Fluffy. <laughs> Willie that the house and pet on. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but to come at the dog, I look better than me when we are in my So we are saying, what is this? <laughs> so to be honest, I wasn't really nice to the dog at that time. Because <laughs> <laughs> cultural difference. I wasn't Absolutely. used to a dog living life like a human. <laughs> so that's one experience that I have. And I also wanted to run outside and play or take my bicycle and ride, go outside as I feel like, because that's what I'm used to. It's like in Jamaica, in the ghetto, little kids just come out and play with us. We feel like when night comes, we know so we'll be in and go to bed. But here's my granddad saying, Oh, Grace, you can't go outside today. And, you know, <laughs> you know, you gotta, you know, and I'm mean, not used to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I was the one who kind of cried to go back home because I wasn't used to it. I miss my mom. Um, I remember my mom used to have it so difficult and I was that other person that would take care of my little sister and my little brother. So my mom used to go out to work to look food for us and I would bathe my sister and my brother, send them to school, go to school as well, hurry up and come from my school, go pick them up, cook mm -hmm. for her, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was very worried um, and I used to say to dad that I want to go back, I want to go back home. Yeah. And he was like, Grace, is a better opportunity here. No, this is a, come on, Grace, you know. <laughs> Very, very stern man. Um, he wanted to give me a, a, a good future. But I guess little, that, little did he know that me want to knock next to Jamaica, and run yep. up and down and DJ. <laughs> so that's really what the transition was like and the cultural difference. It was hard for me as a little girl. Yeah, my life as a child transitioned from Jamaica to England. It was very different. And then naturally you transitioned back to Jamaica. Then I went back home you went to back Jamaica. Home where you were comfortable. And that's where the whole introduction of the sting and everything started and then the career started. Yeah. As a shy girl, like, how did you actually take to that stage and lead the pack? I don't know the problem. So... <laughs> All right, so um, going to St. Catherine High School, like I said, I was the leader, so I was that main girl. I was very popular in school because of the singing and knocking decks. And the teacher used to say, you not gonna turn out to nothing, you know, can't be a singer, yeah, sing. Because I was that one who, I tell you what, the teacher don't understand. I used to make up the songs for my study. Mm -hmm. Like, if we're, if we're gonna get a test, I was the one who would sing and say, five plus five and that and that and work it out and mm -hmm. everybody that study my song for pass the test and the teacher wouldn't even congratulate me. I was the one that was teaching the kids the songs that would make them pass the test. Yes. So I was very popular. Um, a girl, a girl from St. Catherine High School, you know, knew about me and she introduced me to every day. Every day Junior Fraser, he's one of the promoters for Sting and that's a big festival in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And the festival is one of the hardest, because then we boo you, then we buckle you, then we do all of us up. Absolutely. So she introduced um, me to Heavy D, and she was like, I have a girl at school. She had a wickedness. She bad, 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 bad. You can't just make she perform for her sting. And Heavy D was a girl at your school. I want to see her. Mm -hmm. So she introduced me to Heavy D. How old were you at this point? I think I was about, what, 14? Wow, okay, so still very young. I think I was 14. Yeah. Um, and she introduced me to Evie D. Junior Fraser, and he said, when I, when I met him, he was this big, thick guy. Anybody know Evie D. from Sting? He was this big, thick guy, and I was very little. And he said, are she, are she, yes, I'm bad. And I looked at him, and he said, sing something in my ear. And I sing so. <laughs> and he said, you're bad, man. DJ in my ear, I'm gonna start beating the decks and give him some lyrics. And I said, but you're bad, man. He said, two tune you have? I said, no, you're crazy. I'm gonna sing something again, and I said, no man, you're a bad man. He <laughs> said, <laughs> a bad man. And when he said that, no, I start getting more confident and I do it again. And he said, no, I have to make you perform a sting. And that's where my career started. So at that point, did you ever have a tune? Had you ever been to studio in your life? Um, I think the first song I recorded was when I counteracted Lexus song at the time. So I counteracted that song and I recorded it. So mm -hmm. that was my first recording. Yeah, but like at that age, is it like, is it shocking to come out with content like that and to be like sending back for man on their song? Is that normal in Jamaica? It's, 
it's normal in the culture mm -hmm. where people would counteract people's songs. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to see it before I came in. People used to counteract each other. They used to clash. Yeah. It's a part of Jamaican culture for people to clash each other and for them to counteract each other. But I got the confidence when I got that opportunity in, I think it was Sting 2000, mm -hmm. to perform. So after, when I got that opportunity to perform from every day, I went to Sting. There's still videos on YouTube right now when I was performing um, at Sting 2000. I got called back like four to five times. That's kind of what boosts yeah. my confidence. And for those who are like unfamiliar with Sting in the audience, like what, what is it to you? What does it mean to you? What is Sting? Okay, so Sting is a big festival in Jamaica. It's one of the hardcore shows where you'd see like a ninja man clashing with, um, you know, a bounty killer clashing with Beanie Man. Mm -hmm. It's that big culture show that everybody got to see who's the champion of Jamaica. So, you know, Jamaica culture, if you go on the stage and you don't do good, you're going to hear boo, boo. <laughs> Or if you, have, if you hear the boo and you're not come off, they're going to grab a buckle or a Heineken buckle. <laughs> and they're going to down like... So it's a very tough crowd. It's one of the toughest crowds in the world. I can imagine. Sting crowd, that audience, is the toughest audience in the world. So if you go there and do good, you do extremely good and you yeah. can perform anywhere. Yeah. And I think that's what built me so much because I was... I, they used to call me the Queen of Sting mm -hmm. before I was crowned the Queen of Dancehall because mm -hmm. I used to go to Sting every year and demolish it. So I used, to, I, used to, I used to be that one who would take on the male audience, counteract them song, challenge them, go and say, eh, the one you have a song and rare, where am I talking about those spit lyrics fans spot and counteract it? And so that's really how I made the name Spice, even before I, I, I had a 45 um, hit song. I talk about Bounty Killer as well in my earlier days because before, um, before I had a hit song, Bounty Killer was one of that person who hand me a microphone on stage and was even challenging me. One night we dressed up and put on our clothes and there was a big stage show. That's, this is like before Sting. And Bounty Killer was on the show, Baby Sham was on the show, a lot of artists. And I said, yes, I'm going to get my boss, I'm going to perform. Mm -hmm. And everybody was there and we had count down the time and everybody had perform, Baby Sham perform, mash up the place and mm -hmm. time ago. Bounty killer, he didn't wait on his turn. Yeah. Come up and say, yo, clear the stage, you know, move out of the way. Yo. So me start saying, Jesus, I'm not gonna get for perform. <laughs> go, no, me don't want to. So me not go to mess, I'm not get for perform. So everybody start coming off at the stage now. So when the stage cleared, I don't know where I got it from. Energy. But I walk up on the stage Energy. and stand up. And I say, oh, who oh, oh, this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm medium spice. <laughs> and you medium spice? All right, let me see. Run the rhythm. And he start. I don't remember the song he did. He start DJ a girl song. Mm -hmm. But it was as if he was clashing me. Remember me, little, little me. <laughs> so I said, what is? I took the challenge. I took the challenge, and I did extremely well. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me when I was 15, and he said, you're going to be the next queen of dance hall. Wow. 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 About to play. That leads us straight into a video that we have. We are going to talk about you being the queen <laughs> of dance. Well, let's get into this and get into some more questions. <laughs> My first memory of Spice was around 2003 when she did a combination with Shabba, she called Love yeah. From My Heart. Then the double A side I had with Lady Saw, which at the time didn't seem significant, but now when you see how like the baton's passed, that's yeah. kind of a transitional moment. Since then, I just was hooked. <laughs> The record that really blew her to a dance audience when she worked with Dave Kelly, a track called Fight Over Man, and that was like the first record that really kind of cemented her. And then obviously further down the line, it was the link up with her and Vibes Cartel, and that was it. She always talks about how Cartel has influenced her and working with Cartel has been great. Just taking that song alone, like that changed the course of dancehall in a number of Yeah, because a number of tunes came out sounding like yeah. they wanted to be like that, right? Yeah. The other thing that kind of keeps giving from that era, there's a couple of tunes that are more recent that I think must have been recorded in the same sessions as Ramping Shop. So oh, the Conjugal Visit. Yes. And then Back Way from this year. Yeah. 
I was listening to that the other day and I was like, Spice calls him the teacher in the beginning and like, no one calls him the teacher, teacher anymore, anymore. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got this series of tunes in that partnership, that collaboration that have kind of kept coming back and bringing new life to dance all Which kind of highlights the test of time that they've gone through as well. So I remember the 2016 Culture Clash. With us as Team Mixed Pack, Spice's performance was absolutely amazing. Let's go. Give me back again. Coming from where she's had to fight to actually be where she is, she steps out and from her name alone, the whole crowd's going mad. Spice official is my name. I can't remember a bad Spice video. She doesn't put out poor videos, so the visuals are there, the performance is there, and she's professional on top of that. Man, she's waving the flag for Jamaica right now, very high. There's often been this thing about dancers of like, oh, they're hard to deal with, they're unprofessional, they can't fly, they're late. And like, from everything that I've engaged with, both on social media and kind of behind the scenes stuff with her and her team, it's on point. Often people don't think of dancers being like that. And her success, I think, speaks to the power of that. I think she carries the Jamaica culture really well. She never leaves it from her shows. I think people love Spice because they can relate to her. I know especially in Jamaica, she's a working mom. She always shows that she has the best interests of her family that comes first. So that's that relatability, right? You could be a 16-year-old girl from Hertfordshire or from Edinburgh. And you look at Spice, you might look alien to you, but once the music starts and the beat drops and the lyrics go, you're in. So talk to me about like Vibes Cartel, Dave Kelly, like how did that all come to play? So in 2003, mm -hmm. um, I did Sting 2000 and Mash It Up. Yep. I did Sting 2001, Mash It Up. I still have no hit song, I did Sting 2002, Mash It Up. Mm. But because I was so good on stage, promoters used to book me to go overseas. So I was traveling and I was touring and doing a lot of shows before I had a hit song. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know the name Spice because of stage shows. Yep. So stage shows is what made me and what built me. Yep. So I used to do a lot of shows and a lot of bookings. And then one day I'm going to go to England with England here with Baby Sham, Ward 21, a lot of us was on tour. And Baby Sham said to me, why Spice, you're bad at everything, you're wicked, you know, but you can't just perform, I perform, so you have a vice, you have a vice song. So I said, what do you mean? That was in 2003. And I said, you have to get some 45 hit song, and that's going to get the longevity in the business and whatever. So I said, no, I'm not too really know nobody if you record me. And so Baby Sham was the one who introduced me to Dave Kelly. So after doing Fight Over Man in 2003, I started doing a lot of shows, a lot, a lot of other songs, you know, a lot of it. So keep traveling and, you know, the career going well. And um, in 2009, I went to Guyana with Vibes Cartel. And the stadium was ram. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody came out. What did out. Vibes mean to you at that time? Was he like a somebody Okay, to you? so when I talk about Vibes, I have to go back before that, where Ramping Shop came from. Mm -hmm. Vibes Cartel and I, we knew each other before the fame. So during, so Vibes Cartel and I, we both come from Portmore. Um, when he was trying to make a name for himself and I was trying to make a name for myself, we used to go to stage shows, like anywhere the show I keep, we find it. Yeah. So um, I remember one night, we were supposed to go to some show, like them, say, them here's the dance, I keep a country, and we can go perform, I'm the only female. I was always pushing and trying to get my name out there. This is before the fame, before the vibes got there, before the spice. And you know, man stay, the man I bring a friend and Riri, so the car full. <laughs> so, them say, you know, the car full in a mama Riri, me say, but you know, left me. Yeah. Me have to come home. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cartel, they know me as this good lyricist. They know I'm going to do good. They used to rate me. Um, so Cartel say, all right, here a mama, come sit down in my lap. <laughs> And I sat mm -hmm. in his lap and drove from Portmore all the way past Ocherius. I think we went to St. Mary. That drive, that drive is maybe like two hours them time. They can't know the road bad. Now, <laughs> of course. Now we have highway. It takes us maybe an hour to get to Ocherius, but that time it was like two hours. Mm. And I sat in his lap. So um, I went there. I did extremely well. And then I said, Mama, you take Sean. Ray, 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 and we're more to each other, and it was good because that time we hungry feet. So anyway, dancer yeah. keep will find it. So Vibes Cartel and I, we knew each other before the fame. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always say a lot of people 
they see this they see the glory but they don't know the story yeah. so even sometimes people that say why she loyal to cartel or whatever this was before ramping shop so we had a relationship before mm. ramping shop and you know then he in bus before me he was you know went his separate ways and in bus with bounty killer and him start run the place and re 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 and me start dj and me bus after him but uh, we did a show in 2009, and the amount of people that came out to see us in that stadium, Cartel said to me, no, man, we have the same fan base, you know. The man, them rate you, and the man, them love you too, and the girl, them love me, and the girl, them love you too. We have to do a song together. I said, yeah, man, anytime you're ready, it's overdue. And he said, this is when I go back to Jamaica, I have to put the song together. The promoter, because the show was so sold out, wanted us to stay back the following day. Mm -hmm. So he paid us to do the show, the stadium was full. He paid us again to do the same show, the same place, the next day. So Cartel, I said, no, we have to do a song. Yeah. So we went, we went back to Jamaica the next day. He called me the next day. Mo mama, find it, you know. Find it. <laughs> so at that time, I was like, yes, this is 2009. So he called me now, forgot the studio. And I'm going to, I think it's the first time I'm going to say this. So let me just say it. He called me for do the song. At the time, Cartel was like, Bad man, look at look at look at that, look at that, look at So he was the one who changed dancehall for the heavy flow and the fast lyrics and the woolly part, you know? So that's how me know him and rate him as that lyricist. So me hear the rhythm I play now. Turn, 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 turn. You know, my head, me, I wonder, we can't tell I go with a slow rhythm, yeah. Boy, you rate him so much, you know, say, me not like that. So then me hear him start say, when you come in, I'm a ramping shot, mate. You hear me, Jesus, God. <laughs> come in, I like the song. But me not tell you, I don't like it. But in my mind, I said, we can't tell him I could do that slow song, yeah, far. Because at the time, he was so lyrical, and he used to DJ fast, and the girl used to love it, and me want something for the girl, and wine and boom, yeah, and yeah. I go with the flow, and <laughs> him start singing it slow, and me I work with it, and... You know, that means sometimes you just have to go with it, go with it, like you Absolutely. just have to go. And I just gave it my best, regardless mm -hmm. if I wasn't feeling it 100%, I just did it. So Vibes Carter is one who wrote Rampin' Shop. So he wrote the song, put it together, um, and I delivered. And he it loved is. it, and he must say, Mama, eat this, you know, and I say, you think so? <laughs> <laughs> So I never really, I wasn't really loving Rampin' Shop the very first time I recorded it because I wanted to do a faster song with yeah, him. Yeah. And um, when we done this song, he must say, yeah, man. But in Neo, we did it from Neo's song, Neo Independent Rhythm. Yeah. And he must say, yeah, man, that song, yeah, run, me, run a fire in, you know. And this is the song, and Ray Ray, and I say, eh, let's go with the floor. <laughs> he said, well, I have to take some picture for your, for, 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 for your for cover. So I say, like, what kind of picture? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I go and get a picture. I said, no, man, I cover this. That song is sexy, you know, mama. <laughs> so you know me ready. <laughs> ready for it. So I said, all right. And we were close. We were friends. We weren't in a relationship. Mm. And we didn't have anything intimate. Mm. So because we did so friend and we knew him, we knew him from a long time, we just, you know, I put on a towel. I remember like going very, very close to him, very, pro you know, teased, like, you know, <laughs> made us make the thing work. And yes. I'm going to say this. We took the picture that day. Mm -hmm. And Vice Cartel is very hands on. And then I said, yo, what the picture them? This a problem when this drop and ray, ray, ray. <laughs> and we put out the picture and put out the song. And the next day, the song was the biggest thing in the world. Of course, absolutely. Like it was Organic, just, natural. it just run. Natural. My phone was blowing up like the next day, and everybody was like, da, da, da. <laughs> Can't tell us that. Me does not work with it, come on, this song, boss. <laughs> you know, you're in the dance wave, you're known worldwide for dance, you've done so many collaborations. Where do you see yourself now? I want to win the Grammy. I want to. I want to do like, you know, what no other female from Jamaica has done before. I want to set trends like you see like oh you see in bold run and him yeah. set a record mm -hmm. 
I want to do something great that will set something for females in dance hall. So when females come after me, they know that, Lord, you see, that's something they up there, so I, that's something I work for. Absolutely. So it will make the music better because when you have something like, you know, where, you, where somebody make that big step and that big stamp, it will make you work harder because mm -hmm. you know that that's where you need to go. So I want to set a big record in Jamaica. And I'm working towards that, and I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna give up because that's really where I'm aiming for. Bob Marley did it for reggae. I wanna do it for females in dance hall. Awesome. So we've spoken a lot about Jamaica, we've spoken a lot about UK, but we wanna delve over more to your kind of JA side and show you a little special something something. Okay. And just kind of get your thoughts on it. All right. <laughs> Spice means a lot to dance hall in 2019. And what Spice is doing is out of this world. She's always out here just going hard and making an impression somewhere out there in the world. Spice, Grace Hamilton. Good girl, come here now. <laughs> very energetic and it's very loud. And may I tell you, Spice are the bomb. But I just love you, girl. Can I get a walk? Can I get a walk? Can I get a Spice? When we are playing Spice song, we have to put out an extra energy. Spice make we feel good as a DJ, so we automatically have to make she feel good. So that makes Spice different from every female artist. Spice is artist, the shortest and the fattest female artist in our business right now, you hear that? My favorite Spice song is Romantic Mood. I'm in a romantic mood. Cool it, cool it down. Cool it, cool it down. Cool it, cool it down. <laughs> when cool it down, drop a night time in a brother. The place just get mad. Everybody just get crazy. Any man that fuck me, I feel no fit doing thing. Give me pump, pump your papa, off me G string. Bruise it, make me fan it up, my finger, then my swing. Make me cool it on the ice like a lick of thing. Wing. The dance that they do to it is just mad. So you always get those interactions, and I love songs that gives those interactions. She owns the stage when you give it to her. Anytime Mrs. Spicer perform, enjoy from start to finish. Do man can walk. Yo, she bad. Yes. Um, that was a very emotional video. Yeah. Um, emotional because just to see my own people embracing what I'm doing and appreciate what I'm doing because it's really a lot of hard work. But big up boom boom. I mean, boom boom. I wanted the selector where was in vice by my song them. <laughs> so there's a lot of selector who I give a lot of respect to. Big up Chrome, you know, the man up on the radio, ZJ Sparks, Lecture. A lot of people were really play the song. So big up all of the DJ and the selector yes, there you have from to give Jamaica. Them gratitude. And there was a lot of women in there from your hometown as well who yeah. are you what's, what's your message? To the women back in Jamaica, to the women in England, to the women worldwide, like what is it that you're trying to you say? You know to what them? I really like about that video? Um, a thicker girl was on the video. Um, we represent for the thick girls, them, the slim girls, them. You know, matter the, you know, matter your size, you know, matter you, the shape, the color, what. When you hear me sang them, you just want to rock out yes. and out and go. Makes me feel good because I know that I give the the, the, the female that confidence. Absolutely. You know, when I go out and I sing the songs, or even when we hear the song, I'm see all a fluffy lift up and go down. Yeah. It makes me feel good. See a fluffy in the audience. <laughs> so it makes me feel good because that's what I want my music to do. Yeah. So despite people may think it's raw, it's raunchy, I know that when them hear it, it you know, matter the problem, if you're rent, no pay, no stress, so no matter what you have, you just want to whine and go on with yourself. Okay. Oh so yeah, that video made me feel good to see my people from Jamaica does I represent. I love that. Let's get into the next one. When I take my shoes off, it means we're ready to get down to business. As a woman in dance hall, I think that Spice represents power, bravery, being unapologetically sexy. She's battled colorism, she's touched on black hypocrisy, and at the same time she's given us amazing music. Women in dance hall have to work double as hard as men. Yeah. But so many reasons. Like men are purely judged on their music, right? Yeah. That's how it should be. Yeah. But women, they are judged on their body type, their makeup, their hair, their outfits, like so many different things. 
seeing how far Spice has come against all of these horrible odds within that whole industry yeah. is incredible. The format of her music is not R&B, it's not romantic music. Yeah. She's not singing like Ja Cure on a tune. Yeah. It is a bashment tune. To. Yeah. She's a bashment artist, but at the same time, although she's making music for the dance hall, she's making that music but talking about things that matter yeah, in society, yeah. which is a real skill to do. I'm black without a part For me as an artist, I feel like she represents a powerful woman. She actually literally puts no limit on her career whatsoever. People will try to put a limit on her career, but there's no limit whatsoever, especially with the dancing element of things. And for me, I looked at that and I was really inspired. Some people say that she's deliberately explicit to keep up with the men. I understand why people would say that, but I think that's them trying to find a reason for her content. From the beginning, she's been like that. Spice came through the hard way. She came through the battle. She had to take on young females, take on even male artists and make her name. And on top of that, she's a businesswoman. She's a mother. Absolutely. She has a women's empowerment foundation. Like, that's amazing. It is. She's an absolute superhero. She just takes ownership of who she is. I, I think we can agree. Spice is a legend right now, but I feel like it's just going to become greater and greater. She's doing a lot for, for not just women in dance hall, women in general. Her approach to the stage is what's really made her stand out more. She goes on the stage, she's very, very commanding. It's like the whole daggering thing. Like, yeah. Some people say that that's degrading to women. Yeah. Spice has kind of flipped that completely on its head and been like, no, we're in control. Mm -hmm. We are dominating the men. The way she stands a guy up <laughs> to throw them on the floor, <laughs> they absolutely fucking love it. Now, the men are wiling out to be dominated and kicked in the crotch. She's just crazy talented, isn't she? There's inequality in lots of parts of the world, and who best to talk about it? A woman who's jumped to the top of her game. She's sexualized her music. She's like saying, okay, I want to open this up some more. I don't think a politician could do it. I don't think an athlete could have done it. I think the person in that position is Spice. <laughs> Last year in 2018, when Spice posted the skin bleeding picture, I feel like the message that she put out there was needed. Me looking at that, it was like, this is someone I look up to, like, I needed that to, to you know what I mean? She's standing her ground and I felt like it was powerful and it was a statement that needed to be made, not just in dance hall, but just in music in general. She did it very well. Like, very well. Because she deleted all of her photos off of yes. her Instagram and she just put that one up with the blonde hair, the light skin, the blue mm -hmm. eyes. And then I was looking at all the comments and everyone was going wild. And I was looking and I was like, surely not. Really crazy, I didn't expect her to talk about colorism. And it raised so much awareness of that topic. This is a conversation that we need to have. Everyone has their purpose, everyone has their hurdles that they cross, and we just overcome that. And again, that's what I like about Spice. It's not no watching what anyone's doing, it's just I've got a job to do and I'm gonna do my job. Um, where to start? I think we should start with that Instagram photo. Okay. We should start with the Instagram photo because, <laughs> you know, you've got the concept in your head. I'm going to talk about colorism. You know, I'm going to put this picture out. I'm going to make my skin lighter and, you know, I'm going to shock everyone. Where were you in that moment? You know, some people have their best moments whilst they're driving, some people on the toilet, some people are with their team. Like, where were you when you said, this is what I'm going to address today? I was in Europe on tour and um, I was working on my mixtape and I said, why are they? I said, I love singing more slackness. So I have to find that song that's going to separate me and going to mean something to me. And I thought about it to myself and I said, what means something to me the most right now that I haven't spoke about, that I need to talk about? And all my life, colorism has affected me. Mm -hmm. um, to, to this day, it might have less than now since the song, but you know, I remember two, two years ago, you'd post a picture and the comment would be, Lord, Spice can't bleach out our skin. Spice have too much money for staying black. Wow. Spice, no, man. Spice will touch up our colour, man, and turn up our thing. And in Jamaica, they make it feel like if you don't have that complexion that's on the screen, you're not popping, you're not at, you're not even browning, you're not going with nothing like. If you stay as a dark-skinned black woman, then you're said to make... They make you feel inferior. Mm -hmm. They sell the bleaching cream like it's not in their boots. It. I remember when that picture came out, people are saying, no, 
and no spice pretty. She favored Dali, you know? So it's, it's been something that has been affecting the black community, but nobody really spoke out about it in Jamaica. I would think that that would come from you being in Europe and seeing different posters. And, and you know, that's the funny thing first. about it, and that's why it's called colorism, because a lot of people don't know colorism is different from racism. Mm -hmm. Racism wasn't affecting me so much like two years ago, because I used to go back and forth in Europe, and things has changed where I, I, racism, you know, I, yes, one and two, you get some little thing where you see that some people still racist, but it wasn't affecting me. I used to go to Europe, and the, the, mm -hmm. the Caucasians are the ones that have my biggest fans, and they buy the song, and they're screaming, <laughs> and they love you, and they love your music. Yes. But when you go to Jamaica, a black girl look by you and say, no, man, she blacky. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it was your same mm, people, the same black community, that was bashing each other, saying the worst things about you. Still yeah. on Instagram, where's a black girl would have go on their picture and talk, say you're black or your nose big or you're mm -hmm. this or you're that mm -hmm. or you. She mm -hmm. can't fix up herself, it's just the black people that's bashing each other. Yeah. And that's why it's called colorism, because colorism is when your own kind, your, own, your own skin community. color is fighting against you. So that's um, where I decided to do the song. And let's get When I did the song, when I did the song, um, I could have put out the song. Yeah, I could have put out the song, but it wouldn't have been a, um, as, as, as effective as it was if I didn't do that picture. Yeah. So I also wanted, because Instagram now, me know them style. See them big finger? <laughs> the big finger, you eat at the trick. <laughs> Sit down, phone, and then just a scroll. Yeah. So I wanted to have their undivided attention. Mm -hmm. I wanted everybody to hear my message. I wanted them to see, I wanted them to stop. And that's where I said, I'm not only gonna do the song, but I'm also gonna give them that visual mm -hmm. that's gonna have you stop when you say, hold on. <laughs> and then to dig deeper so you can hear my message. So that's really where I got the idea to say, I'm not only gonna do the song and give you the audio, I'm also gonna give you the visual, the visual because I data run the place, I data run Instagram. So that's how the picture came up. I said, I'm going all the way, come on, wow. them get that message out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you, you have the idea in your head, you tell your team, I wanna do this shoot. Obviously you shot the shoot as yourself. They've gone away, they've edited it. When you first saw that picture, how did you feel? Did you say, buddy, look good? Or was you like, ooh, I don't like myself in, the, in this skin color? Like, how did you feel deep down on a real? The, the picture of what I did was makeup. It took me three hours to apply that makeup on okay, me. OK, you actually made yourself up. And um, when they applied the makeup, um, I was there and couldn't believe it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't believe it, I mean, to be honest. Because even uh, with the makeup on, I was making videos because I wanted them to believe that I had bleached my skin. Mm -hmm. Because the whole point was, they were saying you're black, but when you bleach, they say, watch out, look how she got bleached <laughs> herself. And let them see a mouth, did I say you're too black? Yeah. So I was making videos to type, say I'm gonna tease them, but when I look back at it, and when I saw the picture, I couldn't even believe that it was me. So I was saying to the photographer, you can't dance about the picture a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he must say, no, but at that's the part where you want to prove. So I look at it and I say, but it look like me. It look, you think they might think of me. It don't look like me. And I said, no, man, they might know say you. Um, I was very iffy. Because for one, I knew that I would have gotten a lot of bash from it the moment the picture dropped. But I also was brave enough and I was ready because I wanted to say to them, but who not the same one did I say my black? Mm -hmm. So um, it, it was a whole lot of planning. I also had performances and I was planning to drop the, the picture and I was going through airport. So, you know, I was calling mm -hmm. immigration and I say, if, if me turn up at the airport, will I call <laughs> <laughs> I know that people are gonna see me. Yes, so it was a yes. whole yes. strategy plan. It was very deep. My dancers was on board. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get the call in and <laughs> <laughs> only for something them, but it was a whole lot of planning. Was anyone offended? Because, you know, as you say, like in Jamaica, people are used to bleaching, like they love it. This is normal to them. So was anyone offended who, who wasn't that way inclined? Um, they weren't offended. I think they're more it more brought a change. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of other people who was apologizing to each other, yeah. apologi apologizing to you know, people who they were offended because of their complexion. So I don't think it offended anyone, even people who was bleaching, yeah. started looking to themselves and I said, no man, I choose spice attack. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people even, you know. And you know what, that's so powerful. Just just me myself. myself. <laughs> that is so powerful. <laughs> to make a change.
Um, yeah, big up, my, big, big up my dancer, dancing rebel in the building. Yes, to make it change. It's powerful. She wasn't bleaching because, let me explain something to you. She wasn't bleaching because she never loved herself. Mm -hmm. She wasn't bleaching because, oh, you know, the only reason why she was bleaching because everybody in Jamaica do it yeah. and they make it look like it's a the trend and that's the way to go. <laughs> so she young, so she said, right, me I got bleach too. Yeah. You know, that's not the, that's that's what's to it. When I did the song, she stopped bleaching it's immediately. It's powerful, it's very so it powerful. It was a very powerful song and, and I think it was received. They got the message. They did, hundred percent. And talking of power, you know, a charity. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's, that's, that's yeah, serious that power, that's serious power. <laughs> yeah, man. Tell me a bit about your charity before we get on to the love and hip hop and I the know, glitz I'm, and the glam. Um, I have a foundation called Grace Hamilton Women Empowerment Foundation. I did it to enrich women through education and entrepreneurship. Um, we just recently, last year I sent a young lady to college. I sponsored her $300,000. Wow. And wow. she's doing Incredible. extremely well and we continue to... Um, right? So just recently, actually the day before I came to England, we did a back to school launch. Unfortunately, it, it was bigger than I expected because I, I, the things that I had was supplies for like 500 kids. We were giving them book bags, paying their school fee, you know, sponsoring them books and, you know, taking care of the book list and all mm -hmm. of that. But my budget was for 500 kids, but mm. 2,000 <laughs> came out. <laughs> So um, I did that on my own. Yeah. And when I saw the need for more education in Jamaica, I want to make sure that next year it's bigger and yeah. better because I have to make sure that I cater to the, the amount of people that's really need in Jamaica. So I'm going to make it bigger and better next year. And, you know, <laughs> we massively applaud that. But well, you just touched on being a, being a mother, um, which is a big deal. I'm a mom, you're a mom, like I wearing know. music. It is very different after you have a child. Do you sit there and think, whoa, what am I doing? What message am I putting out? No, mommy, no, what may I do? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we like. Oh, my what are you doing? What oh. is the message that you want to put out to your children and your right. children's children? I'm a mother of two, by the way. Big up my son, today's his birthday. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, today's Nicola's birthday, my daughter Nicola, so I love them um, to bits. What I'm doing right now, I do adult entertainment. Mm -hmm. There's no going around about that. Um, dance hall is very, you know, sexual, sex sells. You have to dress a certain way, you have to do your music a certain way. There's no going around that. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want that image, I have to start doing gospel. Is, there's no way. <laughs> so I know what I'm about. I know the music and the genre that I represent, and I know what it comes with. And that's why even my followers on Instagram, they know the difference. So Spice is the one that um, does the adult entertainment. Absolutely. Grace Hamilton, however, is the mother that's at home. Mm -hmm. My daughter don't know Spice, <laughs> and I don't introduce her to that mm -hmm. world. So she's not allowed to listen to my music. She's not, you know. So I'm going to have a lot of questions to answer when she gets older, <laughs> but for now, she knows Grace Hamilton, who's gonna take off this blue wig. You know, once the head and die, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna take off this blue wig, sport my natural hair at home, or wear a black wig, put on my long dress, speak to my daughter in proper English, teach her the right way, you know? I'm gonna grow her as the Grace that was there before Spice, the girl that used to go to church, yes. the decent girl, I don't know what happened along the way. <laughs> but that's the person she knows. She don't know Spice. Mm -hmm. So of course when she gets older, she's gonna say, no, sir. <laughs> I didn't say your mommy was the same. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I'll be able to explain to her to say, you know, mommy chose a career. Um, I was associated with, certain, with this genre and this is what it represents and this is what. But she will have so much respect for me as Grace Hamilton Absolutely. that it would be so easy for her to understand that, oh, two different persons. Yeah. Two different per That's a persona. That's, Absolutely. you know, a character that I take on. So that's what it's like. So when my fans see me in black hair, they call me Grace Hamilton. They know the difference. They Absolutely. know. So, yeah. <laughs> and when she gets to the age and you explain it to her, if she says, I want to be Younger Spice. You say, no, sir. <laughs> What are you saying no off the, are you saying no off the basis of like, you know your journey, you know what you've had to go through, you know it was hard, you know what you've had to do, are you like, no, it's too much, or, or is it just like a mummy no? You know what? Me love fighting, you know. <laughs> I'm a feel like me love fight a whole heap of people if my, any one of my kids choose my career path. Yeah. <laughs> because people will really pull it out to you. Yeah. Um, 
It's a very hard business. It's very difficult. I've been through so much. Mm -hmm. I don't think an hour is enough for me to explain to everyone Honestly. what I've been through, the fight, the hardship, the battles, the doors that you know, was closed and you have to kick down. And it's so hard to be in this business. You get a lot of hate, a lot of fight. And just for being who you are, people hate you for no reason, just naturally because you're talented. Just because you can perform, they're gonna hate you. Just because you do good on stage, they're gonna hate you, naturally. So I don't think it's something that I would want to live over again when I retire because I will be living over it. Yeah. May I go hear them say something about my data. May I go go back on the internet and say, go <laughs> <"Yeah." laughs> so I've already gone through that. I don't want to go through it again. So I, so I wouldn't mean. want them. But again, nobody stopped me. Mm -hmm. So I still wouldn't want to stop them from whatever career they decide to go on to. I love that. That's inspiring because you have to let your daughter do her thing if she wants to, but at the same time, you have to educate her on what, yeah. exactly on what you've been through. And finally, let's, let's talk about love and hip hop, man, because that is... Oh, Jesus! That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing. So obviously, like, you're in Jamaica, you know, you're in England, you're doing your thing, you're going to Belgium, you're in all these places, and then there's the big one, like, there's the big one, there is America. Why did you decide that love and hip hop was going to be, like, kind of your entry point to the US? Love and Hip Hop is a huge franchise. I research the millions of people who views it every Monday night. Mm -hmm. VH1 is a big, big platform, and mm -hmm. you're going to be on VH1 every Monday night. Um, they came to Jamaica when they were doing season six, and um, big up Stacey Chung. Um, she was one of the friends of Mona Scott, who she called and said, oh, you know, we're bringing the Love and Hip Hop to Jamaica. The dancehall queen would be good to kind of show them around. So. When they came to Jamaica, I was the one who, you know, in, was kind of showing them around Jamaica and making them have a good time. I think I fell in love with just the cameras following me and me yeah. just being myself. <laughs> and, you know, I said, hmm, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. It kind of birthed an idea yeah. for me to say, I already have an audience. A lot of people don't know that dancehall is huge, but it's not as big as you think it is. Mm -hmm. There's still so much room for it to grow and expand, and there's little places that people would go, and you don't, they don't even know dancehall, or they don't even know who you are. So I, used, I, I thought about it, it birthed an idea, and I said, hmm, what if I could use this audience, you know, just to introduce them to the brand Spice and to introduce them more to dancehall and its culture and its music, and so I said, I'm going to try out for next season. Nobody believed me. <laughs> I got up, I went to an audition like a normal person mm -hmm. the next year and you know, they, 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 they chose me. They was very interested in my story and stuff and I basically just want to use the platform to get a wider audience and like I said, there's still room for you know, dancehall to grow. So I wanted to just introduce myself to a different audience. Mm -hmm. One last final word for your people. What would your final word be for your people? One word. Oh, I said <laughs> You can have a sentence, you can have a word like the final word. Um, so many things I want to say. Um, I just want to say thank you all so much for supporting me over the years. I've been in the business for over a decade and I do still have a lot of, uh, a lot of fans, a lot of following. I appreciate you all. I love you just the same. I appreciate you and I just want to say continue to support me, continue to support my music. I will continue to do my best. I'm not going to stop whining and skin out my pum pum and go on back. I'm going to continue to make music that you will love and enjoy yourself and party and feel good about. Wow. Life is about being happy and I'm always going to create that music that when you go in the club or when you hear it or when you're in your car, you feel good about yourself, you dance and just live a good life. We have one life to live, big up on yourself. Go out with yourself, on a steam fish and upper body. And I love you all. And thank you so much. Thank Bye, you everybody. All. I'm gonna go to the